funny, only time that he interacted with me was when he was drunk, he would set me on his lap and he'd rub my head and tell me, Daddy love you, that was it. That's all he said. But you be careful out there, don't be doing a wrong. I had done wrong already. I had done wrong. Man, I miss my father. And I want him to be here with me, but he's not. What attracted me to the gang was actually just the unity. We all had something in common. A lot of us were miserable. We had uh, no fathers in our lives. There's a, that's a look at a new documentary called The Streets Where My Father. It tracks the lives of three men who grew up in Chicago. They go from gangs to crime to prison and then to a prison ministry program that they credit with setting their lives on a proper path. Lee Habib is the producer of The Streets Where My Father. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. And thanks for taking the time to share this story with your audience. I appreciate it. We had someone on from a, from a different program, I, I think, uh, who said that these kids on the streets and gangs, they really responded when someone took the time to listen to them, which sounds kind of strange and hokey, but to him, it, it was true. How much of a difference does, does that make in this very big problem? Well, it, it, take, it makes a lot of difference. I mean, think about what attracts young men to gangs and increasingly now young women. It's that very often there's not a father in the house. And this is just, we can get into the causes of that. But the question is, what are the solutions? What works? And in these cases, people coming in contact with these men in prison and loving on them, sometimes other inmates just listening or loving on a fellow inmate made all the difference in the lives of these men. In other words, we don't have to be fatalistic about human beings trapped in bad circumstances. Simply having a conversation and loving on somebody, which is what a conversation is, is everything okay? How are you doing? Is, is really a, a remarkable thing. And a lot of these people find themselves in gangs because they don't have dads. They're looking for camaraderie. They're looking for adventure. They're looking for discipline. And they're looking for family. And the gang replaces the family unit. And unless we go in and meet these kids individually from real families, not these fake families called gangs, these are terrible families. And there are terrible outcomes once these kids join these terrible families. Um, it's, it's up to us to have these interchanges with these kids before they join gangs, while they're in gangs, and even while they're in prison. Because there's hope for every single one of these men, and again, increasingly, young women caught up in gangs. Well, before, you know, you'd like to solve the problem before they get to prison and then they finally meet someone in a prison ministry. It's great that exists, but how do you reach out to kids who are on the streets right now and in gangs? Is it a matter of you need people to just flood the streets like these interrupters and go talk to kids? Indeed. I think that's it. Look, you can go to any high school principal, any football coach, or any pastor and say, who are the kids on the street that we think we can reach? And I really put a lot of this on the churches. Look, we're, in our, we're, we're sitting in our pews, but we're allowed to leave our pews. We're allowed to go to the street and disciple. And if you're not in a church, well, you, you're, you still know how to love. You still, you're raising your own kids. Um, us taking the time to meet these kids where they live at every stage of the, of the game, before, during, and after, is critical. And before, you're right, meeting them before obviously will be the best. These three guys are now, two of them, are now talking to kids in public schools, mm -hmm. talking not only about the, the perils of gangs, but also the love of God. And what's beautiful is that that is an alternative that works for so many people in this world. And so we're allowed to talk about God with, God with kids or anything else that works that helps get these kids in the end off the street. But we know God works. He's, God worked for these three men for sure. Yeah. Lee, we're up against the clock here at the end of the show. But let me ask you, you, you referred to the source of these fatherless homes. What, what is the source? Uh, and is there anything that government should be doing differently to maybe so help solve this problem? Look, I, 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 don't, I don't know that government can solve the problem. I think this is a people problem. Look, there are some people who believe government in, in some ways helped create the problem. So the question becomes, it's a human problem. It's a soul problem. Governments can't raise kids. I think we know this, but we can. You know, and, and that's my message is there's a kid waiting for a family to either adopt that kid or at least get to know that kid and be a mentor to that kid. Wow. And if we do that, I think we have half a chance of turning around a street corner and then maybe a neighborhood. Well, you can stream The Streets Were My Father on SalemNow.com and check out OurAmericanStories.com. Lee, so much, uh, so nice to talk to you. Thanks for being Thanks, with Lee. us. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great day.